preoperative patient instructions. Number one, please do not eat or drink anything at least eight hours prior to your hospital admission. That includes water, milk, or coffee. Should you have anything in your stomach, during intubation, if you do gag, some of this gastric contents could go into your lungs and cause a pneumonia. Number two, no aspirin, aspirin products, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, or blood thinners at least seven days before surgery. Number three, please bring a current list of your medications and dosages to the hospital. Number four, please take your blood pressure medications and diabetes medications with a tiny sip of water in the morning of surgery. The risks associated with a cervical spine surgery include cerebral spinal fluid leakage. Cerebral spinal fluid is the fluid that bathes the brain as well as the spinal cord. Since we are near the nerves as well as the spinal cord, there's a tiny chance we could get a little leak of that fluid. If a leak does occur, Dr. Ghosh will repair it at the time of surgery. Bleeding. Anytime we make an incision in the skin, there is a risk of bleeding. Um, there is always a chance that you could possibly require transfusion. With cervical spine, it is very minimal. Infection. Anytime we make an incision in the skin, there's always a risk of infection. We do give you IV antibiotics both before and after surgery. There is about a four to six week window in which you could potentially require um, antibiotics should you get an infection. This could be either oral antibiotics, which is most common, or IV antibiotics. And in very rare cases, an, uh, surgery to clean the infection is necessary. Hoarseness. Since we are pushing the esophagus and the trachea out of the way, some patients do experience some hoarseness, um, which sounds like they have a cold. They may also have some difficulty with swallowing. This can range for a couple days to a couple of weeks. Most of it does resolve on its own. Nerve injury. If a nerve injury should occur, this can result in chronic pain, paralysis, weakness, bowel, bladder, or sexual dysfunction. Dr. Ghosh does have a neuromonitor monitoring your nerves throughout the entire procedure to minimize any nerve injury. Instability. There is always a small chance that you could develop instability at other levels of the spine, which could require another surgery. General risks of anesthesia include stroke, heart attack, pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, as well as death. My name is Amanda and I'm going to talk about anterior cervical discectomy infusion. So in this surgery, Dr. Ghosh initially is going to make an incision on the right side of your neck. He's gently going to push the esophagus and the trachea out of the way to access the spine. Once he actually gets to the spine, he's going to go into, depending on how many levels you have, either a one or two, possible three or four. He's going to remove the disc in its entirety, as well as any bone spurs or anything that's putting pressure on the nerves or the spinal cord. Once he takes that, he's going to insert a medical grade plastic cage, which is hollow in the middle, and it actually acts as scaffolding, holding the disc space apart, help taking off the pressure off of the nerves and the spinal cord. Inside there, we actually pack some of your bone, as well as the stuff called Actifuse, which is the initial construct of bone formation, and eventually you'll have a solid brick of bone that's going to be in that area. Once he's done putting in those medical grade plastic cages, he's then going to put a titanium plate and screw system on the front, which acts as an internal bracing system. Once we're finished with that, then there's several layers of closure, the last being dermabond, which is literally tissue superglue. All the stitches remain in there and they are absorbed by the body. Cervical spine postoperative instructions. No driving until your first postoperative visit. No lifting greater than eight to 10 pounds. No looking up like changing light bulbs or going to an air show. No soaking in a pool of water, however showering is okay. No running, but we do encourage you to do plenty of walking. Avoid straining. No dressing change is necessary for cervical spine for fusions. Please call your physician assistant or MD for any temperature greater than 101.0, a fever of any kind with a headache or a stiff neck, increased redness or drainage from your incision, increased pain, increased numbness, increased weakness, or increased difficulty with swallowing.